Hi, my name is Mark Fulcher, and in this clip I'm going to show you how to examine the hip and groin of a football player. This is probably the, the examination which it's most important to have a logical, structured way to do the examination, as it's sometimes difficult to put the athlete into separate entities, and it's also common for the athlete to have more than one cause of pain. First thing I'm going to do is ask Jesse to stand up on his feet and do a little bit of walking. So if we can get you to walk forwards and backwards, Jesse. As with any other lower limb joint, it's important to have a look at his gait, to have a look whether he's having any difficulty walking and to see whether there's any real problems with that. If you just find a little bit of space over there again, Jess, it, one of the things I like to do with hip pain and, and with most lower limb joints is to do a hop test. So I'd like you to stand on one foot, hop up and down. Does that create any pain or problems? So if the athlete has pain with that, then I'm thinking, is this potentially a stress fracture? Have they had an acute injury? Is this something more significant? From this point, I'm going to get them to lie down flat on the bed, uh, and the rest of my examination is going to be done with them lying down. So ideally, the patient would be in their underwear, so we can have a good inspection around the hip and groin. So I think it's important to be able to see the low abdomen uh, and the structures around the hip and groin. Palpation is also important, and we need to think about what the likely diagnoses are going to be. If we have an adolescent athlete who's come with an acute onset of pain, we might be thinking about a traction apophysitis, uh, and we need to palpate around the major uh, tendon attachments, so the ASIS, where the sartorius muscle attaches, and the anterior inferior iliac spine, uh, where the rectus femoris attaches. So palpating in there is important. Also palpating on the pubic symphysis is important, and that's generally a tender place. Between the ASIS and the pubic symphysis, we can palpate over the hip joint. And as you'll see in a minute, it's also important to palpate the adductors and the low abdomen, low rectus, and conjoint tendons. So palpation is definitely important. What I like to do next is to move the hip joint around. So uh, hip movements are a fairly non-specific test, but they can be quite useful at identifying hip joint pathology. So femoroacetabular impingement and labral tears. So we'll get the athlete to flex their hip up passively. Any pain or problems with that? And then I'll add a little bit of extra pressure there. Any pain or problems with that? So it's a relatively insensitive test, but patients with hip pain really have no pain with that movement. In 90 degrees of hip flexion, I'll then assess internal rotation, looking for any uh, restriction in range of motion or any pain with that. And again, patients with hip joint pathology it's rare for them not to have pain with that movement. It's a very sensitive test. I'll also test external rotation. That's generally less provocative. But if we're thinking again about an adolescent with a Sufi, their hip will flex and externally rotate. So that may be an important clinical sign. And then I do a quadrant test, which involves flexion, internal rotation, and adduction. And that again is very provocative for patients with hip joint pathology. I also think passively adducting the hip and adding internal rotation is provocative, and then as you take it into external rotation, less provocative. Another test that's described uh, for hip joint pain and for sacroiliac joint pain is the Faber test. So we ask the athlete to put their heel on the knee on the contralateral side and let the hip drop out into external rotation. So is that stiff, is that painful, and we add a little bit of extra pressure. So if an athlete has lots of pain and it reproduces their presenting pain, so the symptom that they've come with, I'm starting to think this could be a hip joint problem. When patients have a more uh, insidious onset of pain, we're thinking about some of the different entities which can cause pain. So adductor-related pain, psoas-related pain, and inguinal-related pain. And so it's useful to be able to classify uh, the patient into those three different groups. It's also important to remember that there may be more than one cause of pain. So having a systematic way of assessing this is very important. So we think about adductor-related pain. The tests that I think are most useful are palpation. So if we bring the athlete's hip into a little bit of external rotation and just let them sit nice and relaxed, we can palpate through the adductor region. You'll feel a fairly obvious firm tendon, the adductor longus tendon, and we can palpate that tendon and follow it right up onto the bone. So where that attaches onto the bone, the enthesis, that's usually the most provocative place. So if the patient has tenderness there, that again reproduces something like their presenting pain, then we're starting to think this is probably adductor-related pain. The other test for adductor-related pain that I think is very useful 
is a squeeze test, so it measures adductor strength. So we can measure that test in a variety of different positions. So I think measuring an extension is important. So Jesse, I'm going to hold your hips apart. I would like you to squeeze your heels together as hard as you can. Hard as you can, go. So if the patient has pain or weakness with that movement, then I'm starting to think again, this is adductor related pain. Another position which can be useful is with the knees flexed to 90 degrees. Fist in between the knees, can you squeeze there hard as you can? Adductor related pain. So next I'm assess for psoas related pain. So there are three tests that I like to do for this. The first is to assess the strength of hip flexion. So I'll ask Jesse to bring his hip up into about 80 or 90 degrees of hip flexion and pull up against resistance. So if you pull hard there, Jesse, pull hard, pull hard. So powerful muscle, sometimes hard to resist. We're looking for pain or weakness. And often the power may seem quite good, but if you compare to the other side, there's a clear difference between the painful side and the asymptomatic side. So resisted hip flexion. We're also going to palpate around the psoas tendon or the psoas muscle. So we find the level of the ASIS and then come a little medially to that and palpate deeply. We can get down onto the psoas muscle. So to palpate that well, I like the athlete to take a big breath in and then a big breath all the way out and we're palpating down on that muscle. So is that painful? Does that reproduce anything akin to your pain? The third test for psoas related pain that I think is useful is to assess the modified Thomas position and look at muscle length and stretch. So Jesse, we'll get you to come stand at the end of the bed. So what we're going to get you to do is flex your left leg up towards you and hug that. And then lean back on the bed. Let your other leg hang nice and loose. So we're assessing muscle length. Ideally, we'd, we'd like to see his tibia sitting at around about 90 degrees of knee flexion. So there's some tightness of his quadriceps. We'd like to see his uh, thigh sitting below the horizontal, so there's some tightness of his hip flexors. So is there any pain just with that position and adding in a, a gentle stretch? So pain in that position, modified Thomas position, again is helping paint a picture of psoas related pain. From there, we're gonna move back onto the bed and we're looking at the final entity, inguinal region pain. For inguinal related pain, some athletes will present with a, a frank hernia, although that's not common in a football population. Most of these patients are said to have a weakness of the posterior abdominal wall. So what we're going to do here is, again, palpate. So I'm going to find the pubic symphysis, palpate over the pubic symphysis, move laterally onto the pubic tubercle, and then palpate around the low rectus and conjoint tendon. So can you lift your head just up off the table? So that helps me locate those landmarks. So we're palpating in and around here. You can drop down again. And palpating around the superficial inguinal ring. And it's useful to do that with the athlete standing up because that's a position where we might be more likely to see a hernia. So palpation there, does that reproduce something like your pain? And then we're going to do a resisted sit-up. So if you come into a sit-up type position there with your knees bent, lift your shoulders up off the bed. So lifting up, holding there, stop me pushing down. So if the athlete has pain and problems with that sort of movement and it reproduces pain in the inguinal region, we're starting to think this athlete may have inguinal related pain. So by conducting your, your uh, clinical examination of the hip and groin in the same way every time, I think it's possible to group the pain into one of these different entities. For me, I'm looking for hip related pain, I'm looking for adductor related pain, psoas pain or inguinal related pain. So I think that's a very useful thing to do. To finish the exam, I'm going to get Jesse to lie on his side facing away from me. Some athletes will present with trochanteric pain, so pain on the side of the hip. So palpating around the greater trochanter. So is there any pain or problems around the greater trochanter? So thinking about diagnoses like uh, trochanteric bursitis. Um, a little proximal, we can palpate the gluteal tendons, gluteal tendinopathy, or uh, trochanteric pain. And assessing hip abduction, I think, is important. So bend your knee, turn your foot out to the ceiling, stop me pushing down there. So assessing gluteal function, hip abduction strength. And then I finish off by getting the patient to lie prone. And I'm considering whether they may have pain related to the lumbar spine, related to the sacroiliac joint, gluteal region or proximal hamstring, and palpate around those landmarks. So that's how I examine the hip and groin of an injured athlete.